Welcome to the Business and Bud Show. You know it's time. Start thinking like a winner when you get online. Streaming audio and video to get you primed for a future of success, a life you design. Business and Buds is the online show for people who want to learn about creating a thriving business and a thriving network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Business and Buds Show. Welcome, everybody. Pat Hilton, Michael Bryant. It is the Business and Buds Show. You can watch us here on video or you can subscribe to the podcast. That will be dropping soon as well. This is the first episode, so we're diving in, talking about Mike getting his business started, how we became buddies, and how this concept for networking online and communicating with the world digitally kind of came about. And it's because we've been communicating digitally for years and years and years as entrepreneurs, as business friends, as buds. And now we're kind of taking it to the next level and we're going to be bringing on guests and sharing stories, but we want to start with Mike's story. So Mike, why don't you talk a little bit about how you got into what you do where you took your business from zero and what it what exactly you offer the business world to the consumer market uh so i kind of want to bring it a little bit back further uh to whenever i was a, a kid i know a lot of people have like entrepreneurial stories from whenever they were kids and um mine wasn't necessarily uh, I mowed lawns. I did all of that sort of shit. But from a very early age, I tried to understand leverage in time. And my dad moved out uh, to Pittsburgh and he was building houses out here. And I realized like he's getting paid to do more work than the person that owned the company. And so I would have to go work at his company and I would make $7 an hour sleeping floors and doing all of that shit. And that was, you know, a incredible value for me because I didn't want to do it. And I hated waking up early and I hated everything about doing that. But there was no way that I was going to get out of it because it's just not how my dad was. And um, so while I was there, I would always sneak off and I would try anytime that the owner of the company would get there, I would try to go meet with him and pick his brain and talk and try and figure out. And I still do it to this day. He's one of my mentors. Um, and you know, it's just one of those, one of those things where I always wanted to be able to come to the lake and still be able to work and, and do those things. Like I'm on vacation right now and it's our first podcast. Um, but my work doesn't have to stop just because I pick up and leave, you know, that's actually the best part about my work. And it's why we designed, you know, our business the way that we did online was so that way we would be able to travel and go take our kids to go do stuff and not be tied down to, you know, a specific location or like a time set schedule, you know, a very eight to five sort of thing. Um, the fortunate thing for me is I get to make my own hours now, even though, you know, other people like any entrepreneur can say that, but at the end of the day, you're at the mercy of your clients. You're at the mercy of your business their problems are your problems. And it doesn't matter if it's one o'clock in the morning. You know, if you want to be a good person to be there for your team, it doesn't matter. You take those calls whenever they come, you know, but it also gives you the freedom to take five or six hours in the afternoon on a, on a Wednesday and uh, enjoy yourself too. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And so with the online world booming like it is, we're seeing today, this was a transition that was many years in the making, and I kind of saw the move happening a long time ago, which is why I really weighed heavy on promoting myself online and networking online, and it became a strength of mine. I've been on a lot of podcasts with a lot of people that will be joining us here on this show as well, and I think it's important for everyone to remember that, you know, putting yourself out there digitally is a great way to open up lines of communication with not only potential buds, but also sure. potential business partners and relationships that can help you grow. And with, with Mike and I, we were bouncing ideas back and forth years ago and Mike took his business and blew it through the roof. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? So I was in real estate before. And again, I realized that time leverage scenario there and I, I wasn't fulfilled there. 
So I stepped away from real estate and just tried to, you know, figure out what the next move was going to be and analyzing markets and try to figure out, you know, what market has more than a billion cap or room to grow to a billion and is still kind of in its infancy. And I have been a huge, you know, cannabis smoker uh, for the past 12, 15 years now. And I've, I've been a, a big proponent of that. And so I knew I tried to get uh, dispensary licenses. I tried to get um, all kinds of different things in multiple states. And it was brutally impossible. Um, so then I figured out that, you know, CBD is allowed to be sold in almost all 50 states. And as long as, you know, you put the, the legal lease and the burden on the customer and let them know like, hey, some states we're not allowed to ship to, make sure that you check with your state representative. It is on you as a consumer, you know, not as us as a supplier to, to keep up with those sort of laws. And uh, once we did that and we were able to ship to, I, th I think we can ship to 47 out of 50 pretty much, uh, pretty consistently. Um, once we did that, it just kind of exploded. And now we spend several hundred thousand dollars a month on ad spend. And, you know, we're on pace. Our first year, we did over 5 million in sales. And we're one of the fastest CBD growing, uh, fastest companies in CBD um, growing. And uh, now we're still we're still on pace. We're going to do eight figures this year. And, uh, and just keep grooving along and hopefully in a couple of years we're able to uh to exit that's a beautiful beautiful thing by the way as you can see up there show brought to you by well-being labs folks it's a beautiful thing well-being labs that store and here's the thing about what's happened especially in the cannabis culture i call it the cannabis culture because i've traveled all over the country with the cypress hills and the coolios and the afro mans and a lot of punk rock bands were big cannabis advocates i'm actually a cannabis advocate i don't smoke anymore but i do think there's so many healing properties in the marijuana plants and in the CBD extractions. I think it's very important for people to understand that they're different, by the way, you know, you don't get uh, high off CBD. So, well, I sent you out a care package. Uh, yes, sir. With everything because, you know, I just wanted you to try it. So that way you had an idea of, you know, what we were selling. Mm -hmm. And I, I want you to be as honest like if our product sucks, rip me to fucking shreds right now. Oh yeah. And I've called you and told you how, how phenomenal I think it is. Um, it's, it's an, it takes the edge off. No doubt. Um, I would say that it's fast acting within 20 or 30 minutes. You know, you start to kind of get into that dialed in zone. It doesn't have the, uh, drag that came with, when I smoked a lot of weed, like I, it, it would give me a nice dialed in feeling for 30 or 45 minutes, yep. but, uh, I would get this draggy stony feeling after that. I never liked that. Um, it didn't matter what strain I smoked. And again, I probably over smoked too. Let's just be honest, but, uh, it didn't matter at, at one point what strain I was smoking. I got this draggy feeling. I hated that kind of an energy killer kind of feeling. And I just don't get that with this. Um, a little uh, dropper really takes the edge off, zoned in. I can focus. I can do what I need to do. I don't lose energy. I don't. I don't feel like a like a, a brain fog drag. Um, uh, there's not like a high from it. Not like a stony high or a body high. Sometimes yep. you feel like a body fuzz. And again, this is just me. And and I used to smoke a lot, um, but I dialed it back. I, I had other business stuff I was working on and the environment for me changed. And so, you know, I, I quit drinking alcohol after a while. And I, when you're in music venues, that stuff, the access is different. I'm not around it as much anymore. I run my business online now. You're so, almost 700 days sober. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's so incredible. It's, it's great. And I think it's important for people to remember that you can still, you can still herbally medicate yourself. You can still get the benefits of cannabis without smoking or being high or, or any of those things. And there's nothing wrong with those things at all, but no, it's important to look at 
How can I still get the benefits? There's proven benefits. This is not uh, some kind of hoax anymore. I mean, there's proven benefits in these plants. And it's really cool that it's able to be used in a technology based way. And I think that's cool about your packaging. It talks about nanotechnology and I read about it and I did all this research once I got it and it's amazing and it works and it's phenomenal. And, uh, and and I, and I highly recommend giving it a shot. If you're somebody out there that, you know, maybe you're looking to make some changes in certain areas. And again, everybody's, everybody's life is their own life, but um, zeroing in on health changes, especially with, with what's going on with this global pandemic, people are looking to really boost their immune system. I've been, I drink greens every day. I take my multivitamins. I walk outside every day. I do as much as I can to get the healthy in here so that when I work and I do entertainment and I do marketing for people, I'm on the camera constantly. Yeah, I want to feel good. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I think that was the attraction to cannabis in the first place. Got me buzzed, got me feeling good. I'm networking, I'm bouncing off the walls. And so I think it's a beautiful thing that there is a solution of for people that maybe don't want the, what's the professional word, psychoactive effect of marijuana or cannabis yeah they don't want the uh they don't want the high thc they don't want to feel different than you know they don't want their brain to feel different or feel out of control in any way right. form. and uh no it's a it's a great it's a great tool to have we uh we have gummies that also have melatonin in them that is by far one of our biggest sellers um but i'm I'm not here on this show. Like we're not doing the show to promote, you know, our product and stuff. It's just, well, yeah. I mean, I think we wanted to touch on, it, especially since it's the first episode and it's like, well, what does this guy do? Yeah, 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 of course. And it's, so uh, I think it's important to kind of, uh, give people a little background because that industry is booming guys and it is online. And so Mike has found a solution for people, especially people like myself, or even I would say, parents even yep. at night who want to relax, but they don't want to drink. They don't want to be smoking it up around the kids. And yep. again, everybody's got their preference. This is a great solution for those kinds of people. So when it comes to business and when it comes to entrepreneurship, finding a solution for people is key to scaling your business. And so this all goes hand in hand with where you took this and where you're going in the future and your projected sales for you know, the future are through the roof. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, we're, we're hoping that we're going to be at 50 million by 2022 a year. Um, we're in the process of building out an Amazon style marketplace, uh, where, you know, we'll beta test it. I, I don't have just wellbeing labs. I have a couple of other brands as well, and we're going to load those on there first. We'll beta test it, find out, you know, how traffic is being driven there. Um, and figure out exactly how we're going to figure out the logistical er like areas. Because let's say that I bring on 20 or 30 other brands onto that site. Now I have to make sure that all of their products are lab tested for my merchant processing. That's a huge thing that you know I have to think about. I have to make sure that the warehouses that they are using actually ship on time. Because if they don't, and I get a chargeback, it goes towards my merchant account, not towards theirs. So, you know, I ha am figuring out all of these things right now. And those are those are some of the logistical errors and supply chain things that you have to, to try and figure out before you get started and before you launch. You kind of have to see the problems uh, that are going to be ahead of you. But the fucked up part about entrepreneurship is, you have to kind of do it yourself anyways, hit those roadblocks, do it once and learn how you're going to move forward. Because if you're too scared to try it each time, then it's never really going to work anyways. I mean, I've, I've blown 170 K, you know, too many times to count, but like, we're still profitable at over 20%. You know, it's like, I'm just willing to try stuff and make sure that, you know, if we're going to go after it, we're going to give it our best shot. And it may be that we're going to take a huge black eye on it, but at least we're going to, we're going to give it our best go. 
Well, and that's a great lesson in entrepreneurship right there. And it's a fundamental thing that you will learn over the years is that there is no heavyweight champion that ever wore the big gold title belt and got the million dollar paydays that didn't have a black eye here and there. So yeah. um, you've Floyd, got man. to be willing to take the hits. Floyd. I mean, that dude never seemed to have gotten. Well, back. yeah, Floyd was a pretty good, pretty good at avoiding some shots, but there was, who was the guy? Castillo. Castillo really, uh, really brought it to him. So he didn't yeah. come out unscathed every time, but yeah, totally true. You got to be willing to take the hits, even in training. I'm sure there's a lot of clips we didn't see where he figured oh. out how to get away from those punches and then avoided them in the fights as well. And so great example of someone who's willing to adapt to his style changed over the course of the years, way more defensive. He was, he, he come after people a lot more when he was pretty boy Floyd than when yep. he was uh money way Mayweather. He found ways to wear people down uh, later in his career, which is <laughs> as time goes on in business, you got to find ways to uh, predict where the market's going, find solutions, find openings, find holes. That's what Mike did. He found something he was passionate about. He found an area of, the market that was going to grow through the roof. That's already a popular thing in our culture. I mean, yep. marijuana and cannabis are not going anywhere in pop culture. They've been around forever. Uh, yep. Whether, whether people thought it was a jokey reefer thing back in the day, or it's changed because technology changed, digital technology changed the way we communicate changed. And yep. there's always some smart guy with a lab coat, that figures out how to make money off something. Yep. And so it's usually uh, some nerd behind a computer. I can barely use a computer, um, which is which is why you know I hired you to make all of our content. I and it's a beautiful I have, thing. I have a developer because I don't know how to fucking write code. It's just mm -hmm. I don't want to learn either. It's not something I have any interest in. You got to focus on your strengths, man. And that's back to the whole the, I'm a good the champ single. thing. Yeah, everybody's got a style. Yep. And I'm so a good builder, and I'm good at finding the right people to, I'm good at sifting through the bullshit, if you will, to find the right people to do the job that I want them to do. And that's, that's a skill set on its own. And uh, I think that you only get that from hiring the wrong people. And, you know, you have to learn that the hard way. Like oh, I have learned one lesson from entrepreneurship that I didn't learn the hard way. I mean, I've certainly had coaches and stuff like that that have helped me avoid roadblocks. But even if you avoid those roadblocks, there's another roadblock that comes in front of your way. It's just part of how it comes. And everyone wants like a shortcut from A to B. They want to go from zero to five million a year except for the fact that they don't want to talk about the fact that you're going to have, you know, your hair fucking fall out. I had a full head of hair literally last year, you know, but in the duration of scaling this and like we bootstrap this, I put all of my, my money at the time into this, you know, and it was just one of those things. Like we don't have any debt on the company. So if, anything is like if the ship is going to float or if it's going to go down, it's all on, it's all on me. It's not on anyone else. Uh, uh, and not on just me, my father-in-law is, you know, a partner in this, but it's like, it's, it's all on us and it's on our family run business. And that's something that, you know, if it wasn't for him, we have such complimentary skill sets. If it wasn't for him, you know, our business certainly would not be where it is today. I mean, I owe, I owe everything to that, to that partner. That's beautiful. And that's part of the reason why we were bouncing ideas back and forth. And the show is called business and buds, and he'll be joining us on certain episodes. Yep. But as we wow. move forward, you know, we're going to have a lot of different guests. We're going to go over a lot of different things. If you could give people some advice that are watching the first episode here, where you started, what did it look like? 
and where you're going, what does it look like? So let's start with where you started. How did you take your first steps? Because I think a lot of people may see this and be like, oh man, I'm still not going to post any content or I'm still not going to you know, invest in this or I don't know, I don't think the SEO thing's going to work for me or blah, blah, blah. There's always going to be doubts. What kind of stuff were you dealing with when you first had this idea pop in your head of this is what we're going to do? So for me, the first thing that happened was I knew that I was upset with my career in real estate. I made a bunch of money, but I wasn't happy. And so I went on a kind of like a quest. I actually started a different podcast this before this called The Michael Bryan Show. And what I did was I went on Instagram and I just started searching every person that was a leader in the cannabis space, whoever was posting the most content. And I was like, okay, who are they? And then I would watch their stories and I'd figure out who they were hanging out with. And so I would message those other people that had less followers and I would engage with them. And I, you know, was reaching, I was trying to, you know, reach out to Matt Morgan at the time, but he had, you know, 900,000 followers. I have, you know, 400, 300. I'm like, dude's never going to read my DM. So I didn't message him. So I watched his stories for like two or three weeks and I figured out that, you know, his roommate was Jason Washington. And I was like, okay, dude's got 60,000 followers. It's probably a little more accessible. And so I DM'd him and I was like, hey, uh, I'm looking to get into the cannabis space. And in order to do that, I want to start interviewing entrepreneurs that are already there to figure out what niche I want to go into. And he was like, okay, sure, fly out to LA, not thinking that I would. And 10 minutes later, I sent him back a screenshot of my flight booked. And I was like, all right, I'll be there, you know, podcast, where do you want to do it? And I flew out, I met, I met him at his house. And then I spent literally the entire day with him. And then he had me sleep at his mom's house and stuff. It was, it was super, it was so cool. Like he was just a, a genuinely good dude. And he, you know, said something to me on the podcast, which was, you know, interesting. And he was telling me about how CBD was just blowing up. And I didn't make another podcast episode after that. I don't think I literally went straight home and my brain didn't stop working. And I tried getting pr CBD processing, credit card processing. I couldn't do it. So my father-in-law and I partnered up and we bought five other small CBD companies, took their processing, started from there uh, which is a very unique way to get started into it. And we basically, we got their developer, which was the prize jewel of this whole thing and brought him on board. And then from there, we bought the company January 1st, basically beginning of January. We launched our brand February. What year was it? 2019. Got it. Uh, we bought the company January 1st, rebranded February 8th, launched and by February 28th, we had done uh, 212,000 in sales. And by month three, we were at 600,000 a month. And um, we've just been cruising on a positive trajectory ever since. That's unbelievable, folks. Unbelievable. So what do you see yourself doing from here? I mean, obviously the business is going to continue to grow, but now you want to start putting yourself into the business space and networking and making personal development along with other entrepreneurs and kind of creating a community of people that are like-minded yep. and getting your foot into the potentially the conference scene. We've talked about maybe doing some events in the future. There's yeah. a lot of things we can do, even just virtually. And it all starts with just taking the first step. And that's literally what we're doing today is just taking the first step, looking at what we've done in the past. How can we kind of fuse these two worlds together, these two brains together, uh, find time for it too, because there's the business comes first naturally. And so where do you see yourself taking not only what you've learned and growing that, but also take you and growing you and others that are, are willing to jump along for the ride as well? So I still have coaches uh, that I that I work with because like I certainly I don't know the way that I look at it is like I'm small fish 
you know, I've, I've achieved some certain levels of success, but in e-commerce, I mean, I'm, I'm as tiny as it could be. And I'm looking to get to, you know, nine figures a year, 10 figures a year. And, you know, that's, that's the goal for me or to build some sort of enterprise that I can eventually sell, you know, for, for a billion um, or more. But the, being able to interview and to meet people in this space on this podcast and this forum where we can really just dive in and have long form talks and, and get to know people and build out our networks, um, have them learn from me simultaneously. You know, it's just as advantageous for any other business owner to come on to this show to speak with me because we both are basically sharing an hour of each other's time. And we're both providing and getting value from each other and then providing that to everyone that's listening. So it's kind of like, you know, I think I think about it in the sense where if we can provide value to each other, we're automatically providing value to a listener that's on the call, you know, and it's just one of those things that we have to to try and figure out. Absolutely. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So uh, Mike is at the lake with the fam. Took a minute to uh, bang out our first episode. I've had a great time on here today, man. It's been awesome. It's been absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Uh, make sure to check out wellbeinglabs.store. Yep. And uh, they are the proud sponsor of the Business and Buds podcast with Michael Bryant. Sure are. And producer Pat here, having a great time as well. Thank you, sir, for believing in myself and for putting time and, and effort into supporting me over the years. I've come a long way. Thanks to people like you. Um, and I, I really do truly appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to the next one, sir. 